perhaps this would be an opportunity just to talk a little bit about the TESS mission, which is relatively newly launched and operational. And maybe you could just tell us about what TESS's place is in the science of exoplanets mm -hmm. and its strategy and what is it doing right sure. now? So if you have an answer now that you, that you haven't had before, and the answer is that planets are everywhere and all kind of planets populate our galaxy, then the next logical step is to find our nearest neighbors. So TESS is designed to take that next step. TESS is actually a fairly small astrophysics observatory. It's only about the size of a washing machine compared to Hubble, which is like a school bus. Um, and it is in a really interesting orbit around the Earth. It orbits on an elliptical orbit. It's mostly out there going slowly on this elliptical orbit. But every two weeks, it comes close to Earth, and it dumps a whole bunch of data all at once from what we call an observing segment. It looks like an orange slice. So. Each one of those segments you see up there is an observing sector, and we stare at that region without blinking for 27 days straight, two orbits. And what we're looking for is a tiny dimming in the star's light as a planet passes in front of that star. So did anybody have the good fortune of seeing the transit of Venus in 2012? This is when Venus passed in front of the sun. Some people did see it. You saw the amazing little Earth-like planet passing in front of our star, the sun. That's exactly the method that we're using. Kepler used it before, and TESS is using it now. We monitor hundreds of thousands of stars all at once, waiting for that tiny little dip, which is called a transit, to pass in front of the star. We see the dip in our data, and we can learn a lot from that dip. We can learn about the size of the planet with respect to the star because it's covering up an area of the star that is directly proportional to the dip. And we can measure the period of the planet because the dip is repeatable. So once we've measured the period, we know where that planet is with respect to the star. That means we can say how close to the star it is, how much energy it's getting. Is it in what we call the habitable zone, uh, which is where liquid water could pool on the surface? TESS is actually going to find a lot of planets that are much, much closer to the star than the habitable zone, much, much closer than even Mercury or Venus. But we're taking the census of our nearest neighbors. We're about halfway through the survey. We're in sector 12, it's 13 in the southern hemisphere, and then we'll flip around, do the exact same thing in the northern hemisphere, and we are predicting that we will find thousands of exoplanets around uh, some of the nearest and brightest stars.